Following the invasion of Ondo State House of Assembly by suspected thugs, Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Bamide, Right Honorable Bamidele Oloyalugu, argues that those who besieged the complex only came to pray for a peaceful election. The su suspected thugs to be, they are supposed to be, they are members of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, the NURTW, who had allegedly stopped some lawmakers from entering the complex. They were said to have been wearing the campaign attire of Governor Rotimi Akiridolu. Joining us to discuss this, to really get the true perspective, is the spokesperson of the Ondo State House of Assembly, Honorable Binga Omole. Good evening, sir. Good evening. And also we have uh, Reverend Dakbo Daramola, who is also a political analyst, to give us another pers or to give us more perspective on this issue. Good evening. A pleasure, my brother. Let me start with uh, Honorable Omole. Uh, what exactly is the true situation? Yesterday we had uh, uh, the Deputy Speaker, uh, Honorable Iroju, who said that uh, they were talks and they were out to arms four of them who were supposed to return to the House of Assembly. What's your version? Well, thank you very much. I expect that by now you will have seen the press release, the official press release from the House of Assembly in relation, in relation to what happened yesterday. Um, well, it's unfortunate that uh, lies and deceit are being banded in the media, and uh, some media people are falling for this. What happened yesterday was nothing that ordinarily would have, I mean, been in the in news or something that raised uh, any feather. The speaker of the House of Assembly, Right Honorable. David Amidele officially invited the leadership National Union of Road and Transport led by Jacob Adebo, popularly known as Dajo. And uh, they came for a meeting on sensitization on how to be peaceful to maintain peaceful atmosphere during the campaign and during the election. You will, you will, I want to tell you that, and you know that the National Union of Road and Transport are critical stakeholders in this state. They, 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 they generate a, a quantum of revenue, internally generated revenue, so they are stakeholders, but in year past, we know that the 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 uh, some of them allow themselves to be used uh, for uh, the various activities during the election. So, well, as a responsible, independent arm of government, who has uh, the 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 well-being of the citizens of those states, at, at, we made it a duty that this set of people to be sensitized, okay. you understand? And I want to say, when we released our press release yesterday, we, we, we follow it all with pictures that was taken when during came. the meeting. The meeting took place in the conference hall of the House Assembly. Okay. Please, which House Assembly we allow talk to enter its conference room and, uh, okay. you know, talk to Chief uh, Honorable Molly, we will time. come back to you. Yeah. It's, it's a conversation. So let's also bring in uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Bordara Mola to give us his perspective. I'm sure you're following the trend, and I'm trying to uh, uh, wonder why someone or some people or some journalists who said they were there and report that these men were armed with weapons. What do you make out of it as an observer? Well, as an observer and somebody who um, has over almost three decades of experience as a journalist um, and a media executive, uh, I think um, what I've had so far is conflicting, and that gives me some worry. Um, I, I've, I personally, I've tried to investigate the matter from 
reporters who are also on the ground. And even pictures that we have, you know, from, from that area, that axis, um, along the um, assembly um, quarters, uh, you know, does not reflect what uh, Mr. Amole just, or Honorable Amole just said. I'm not saying that um, his, his, his comments, you know, are untrue, but I'm saying that in the first instance, what the speaker said was that, you know, they came for prayers. What Honorable Amole is now saying is that they came for um, sensitization and awareness and some kind of advocacy and, you know, civic engagement. So those are conflicting stories in the first place. Secondly, like I said, the pictures that came, because all the media houses who reported the story, they were, they were in unison. I um, mean, in, in terms of agreeing that, you know, there were some people, um, you know, who had, you know, some weapons, you know, or some kind of, and the pictures also support, they can go online. I don't need to, I'm not the one that took the pictures. Even some of these pictures were taken by eyewitnesses who were in the car and different parts of that in neighborhood who took the pictures. So, but bottom line is that I don't think that this issue should have descended to a point where, you know, because of political disagreement, people who were, you know, elected honorably by their own people will be denied access into the complex. So, and I think that is also is worrisome. And if you look at the trend of things going on in Ondo State, since um, the deputy governor, um, you know, decided to, to leave APC ab initio to go to PDP, we remember very well that even the governor, even though he tried to say that he didn't know what was going on, but we remember that the deputy governor was impeded by the police from driving out of his own, you know, of his own, you know, quarters. So this trend supports, you know, whatever is going on, and then the effort to want to impeach the deputy governor um, shortly after he, he becomes. Okay. And then thank God for the judiciary that um, stopped them in the first instance, um, okay. you know, from moving ahead. And secondly, the attempt to even suspend, you know, some members who are now alleging this kind of um, attacks on them. I mean, you ask yourself, why were they suspended? You know, okay. is it because they were... Um, in they were in disagreement. Mr. Daramola, you've thrown you up know, a whole lot so of issues. Th those are the issues uh, which we, I find in a bit worrying. Uh, uh, and the time is really always running seriously. But let me quick go back to Honorable Molly. As he has raised some questions, and I'm sure you're <laughs> willing to respond. In addition to that, can you also explain why we've not had these four lawmakers reinstated if the court had said that they were unjustly removed? Or could it be fear? Or Let me listen to you. Thank you very much. Let me quickly respond to the gentleman on the other side. Well, it's unfortunate that uh, when people sit down somewhere and start telling lies and this is just to put wing people. What has been happening in the States, particularly in the other assembly in recent time, has been in the public domain. The honors is on whoever is alleging to prove. You understand? Today, we had parliamentary meeting and plenary. Nobody was harassed. No talk. No nothing. I I never have, I, I'm in constant touch with Mr. Speaker. I never read it anywhere or where he said those people came for prayer. The other assembly is not a church. It's not a worship center. I'm the official spokesperson of that house, and I've told you what those people came there to do yesterday. Then it was uh, the, the gentleman on the other side, you know, said something about the deputy governor being impeded. I want to put it to you that the truth of the matter was the commissioner of police was invited by the deputy governor on that particular day this up. The deputy governor have already left the government house. It was people that were looting, that were not government officials that were suspected and the security apparatus, the government house stopped them. So the deputy governor had to come back. So the video saw 
was doctor, so that we sing as if the commissioner of police was said that that is in the past now. You said uh, some lawmakers, some second lawmakers went to court. Yes, it's their fundamental human right to go to court. But let me tell you, the situation now is that the first court, which is the high court, is not the last court in any case. They said they get judgment, we have appealed that judgment. And we have got the seal of execution. Understand? But the truth of the matter is that the House of Assembly, as an independent body, has the right, as a strike in our standing order and code of conduct, to discipline Honorable any Honorable member who has. I'm trying to manage time because of time. But basically, yeah, my, my yeah, worry yeah, is, let me stay with you. Let me stay with you. I'm staying with you. I'm staying with you. I'm staying with you. Just give me a minute. It's important I say this. Okay, go ahead. Yes. You see, the story these people are banning about is that they, they did not sign the impeachment notice of the deputy governor. Let me tell you, let me come why did we not suspend the night? You see, these three, the death, the, what their suspension was their only behavior. And what they did was in the open. They attacked a fellow on and they attacked men. You understand? So when we start with in a code of conduct and stand that we have okay. time to discipline our member. Okay, let me, let me because uh, I, I wanted to stay with you, but I think uh, to a large extent you, you, you took some of this time. But let me quickly listen to uh, Mr. Daramola. Uh, do you have some further explanation to make on what he had said? No, basically, like I said, um, we are not, we are, like I said, with my experience as a journalist, I respect the honorable member of the state, I mean, the House of Assembly. Um, on this position, like I said, we are saying what we have as a matter of fact. Let me also, let me go back on that. The Speaker, Mr. Honorable Oloye Logun, clearly stated that those guys, those um, uh, members of the NURTW came f for prayers, and that was quoted in all the media, you know, house, most of the media houses today. So I'm not speaking my words, I'm speaking what he said. Number two, um, I think as, as, you know, as a House of Assembly that should understand the separation of powers clearly, it doesn't matter what the motive, you know, like he is trying to explain that they have the powers to discipline. Nobody is taking that away from, away from the House of Assembly. But on the grounds, on the premise on which they were suspended, they've gone to the courts and the court said you were illegally, you were legally removed or suspended, so it has been quashed. I would nullify it. So go back and continue your functions. In the respect and regard for, you know, separation of powers, what I believe should have happened simply is that allow the people to settle in, and then if you think you have other grounds, you know, to suspend them, they can pursue that. But based on the action that was taken originally and they went to court for, I think it's only ideal and right that they should have been reinstated. That is what the court instructed. I mean, so it, it, it should have been easy because... I think the idea, you know, of wanting to stamp these people out, you know, uh, for, uh, aggressively or forcefully, will not help matters. You know, it doesn't put okay. the election coming up, coming up, you know, uh, in any in any good stead. So I think people should respect separation of powers. Number okay. one, okay. and number two, the governor must understand that this man would become, by virtue of our, you know, political setting has done what, you know, many other people have done before. And so they should create an atmosphere of peace where people should respect other people's opinion or position on issues. And that is the way democracy can grow. And that has been my position all along. Okay. Thank you so much. I, I, I'm sorry. I may have to just quickly take Honorable Molly as a final comment. And I think uh, it's in the issue that uh, Mr. Dakwadaramola has raised. And that issue is what will the House of Assembly stand to lose if they allow this man to come back to the House? Even if you have done steal of execution, these four members obviously cannot impeach the governor. The Honorable Okay, Molly, let me put. Yeah, before I go to that, let me quickly you, say you have this. just 60 seconds, please. You know, why bring in the president of the government into this issue? The governor is not a member of the other. I'd be like 
Oscar was referred to the governor. But how do you say that? Let me say, like I said, we have a standing order and we have a code of conduct. It is not the judiciary that we discipline our member for us. This guy can be reinstated. It's the revolution of the act that can reinstate them because they took their oath of office in the chamber of the assembly. A suspension was based on a solution passed by the majority of the house. So if they be reinstated, there's going to be a resolution of the house. That's on my final note. Okay. That's that's your response uh, because our time is fast spent. Thank you, uh, uh, Honourable. Well, I, I just want to chip in that that is not respecting the separation of power, and okay. we cannot take that away from democracy. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. Thank you for your intervention on this issue, and we sincerely hope that the rule of law will prevail. The rule of law applies to all the three arms of government. It applies to the the fourth estate of the realm. It applies to every one of us. And that's our take, that's our stand on this issue. Thank you once again, Benga Omole, the spokesperson, Honorable oh, Benga Omole, sorry, the spokesperson of Ondo State House of Assembly. And once again, thank you, Reverend Dapo Daramola, for your intervention on this matter. It's a pleasure. Okay, um, we want to say thank you to our viewers for tuning in to this uh, program. Plus, Politics returns tomorrow, same time on this channel. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladende. Seeing you bye for now.